Hoy estamos en el MoMA para visitar la exhibición René Magritte, el misterio del ordinario, 1926 a 1938, que son los años del comienzo de la carrera del artista. Vengan conmigo. Estamos con Daniel Johnson, quien es eh, parte del equipo curatorial que puso, que armó esta exhibición. Thank you, Daniel, for receiving us. And I understand this is the first exhibition focusing on the early period of Magritte's career. And related to that, I wanted to ask you, which are the elements that characterize this period that will constitute Magritte as the artist we know? Excellent question. <laughs> um, so this is Magritte, The Mystery of the Ordinary, 1926 to 1938 and it specifically focuses on the 20s and 30s, as you said, his early career. Um, and we had several goals when we looked at this time period. We first wanted to show how incredibly innovative Magritte was during this moment. And as you said, he became the Magritte that everyone recognizes today. We also wanted to show how incredibly innovative he was within the specific historical context of the Surrealist movement, because this is when he was most involved with the movement. He moved to Paris to be with the Parisian Surrealists, and so we wanted to highlight this particular aspect of his career. Related to the title of the exhibition, uh, what is the connection of the title with his provocation, his conceptual interest? Sure. Um, so the subtitle is The Mystery of the Ordinary, 1926 to 1938. And the ordinary comes in because Magritte was constantly talking about how he wanted to focus on everyday objects, banal things. And then the mystery comes in because he wanted to make these objects strange. And he did this through various ways. He used juxtaposition, he mixed up words and images, he used metamorphosis. There are many, many tools in his arsenal that made ordinary objects mysterious. You as a curator, you have spent a lot of time with the work. I know this exhibition took like three years to put together. Yes, yes. Collaboration with many museums and private collections. So the question is, for you as a curator, which are the uh, most surprising discoveries in this process? Yes. Yes, I mean, there were many discoveries throughout, throughout the course of the exhibition because, as, as, as you know, it takes about three years to put this together. Um, we had some amazing conservation discoveries, uh -huh. some hidden paintings. We also made some historical discoveries, where things were, who owned them, sort of the historical context of, of this moment in his career. Um, it was also fascinating when the works got here, and this is one of the reasons we put together an exhibition like this, when all the works arrived and you see them together, certain aspects of Magritte's work really come out. For example, in 1929, which is the year of this painting, of this painting behind us, there, uh, his palette lightens up. It becomes clearer and brighter, and this is something that I think really only becomes really clear when you bring all work, works together. This work right here is The Menaced Assassin, and it's in MoMA's collection. It's one of Magritte's biggest paintings from this time period, and he made it specifically for a one-person exhibition in 1927, where he presented himself as a surrealist for the first time, and he later said it was the first time that he showed what was truly valuable in his work. This is a very mysterious painting. What's most interesting about it to me is that it's mysterious, yet it's also one of his most narrative works. The, the next period after this, this is 26-27, the next period after this is 1927 to 1930, because in 1927 he moved to Paris. 
and he moved there to become part of the Surrealist movement there because that was the sort of the center of the Surrealist movement, and it was um, also where an artist would go in 1927 if it's they like wanted to be to yes yes their yes career. right and if they wanted to make a name for themselves you exactly. know exactly. So in 1930, he planned to have his first major exhibition in Paris. So this was going to be a big event for him. Um, and he produced many paintings in anticipation of that. Unfortunately, the show was canceled because the gallery closed. His dealer left and went back to Brussels. His dealer was also Belgian. Um, but we still have the, these amazing works that he made for the <laughs> exhibition. And one of them is this work here, which is called The Eternally Obvious. You have here five separate canvases mounted on a plexi sheet. And what I love about this is that Magritte is taking a very, very traditional subject, that of the female nude, and completely changing it. He's cutting it up, he's mounting it on a, a piece of glass that makes it an object. And in fact, he called it an object. He called it a painting object, which I think is a perfect word for it, because it has this in-between status as not a painting on a wall, but also not a sculpture. People link the cover faces with his personal life. Yes. Can yes. you tell me a little? Can you tell us a little course, about of course. that episode? So, um, when Magritte was a young teenager, his mother committed suicide. She drowned herself in the river, in a river, and. Um, there's a tale that Magritte found her, or that he saw her, with her face covered with her nightgown. Um, he did not actually, that's not true, he did not actually find her. And it's in fact not clear if in fact she, her face was covered with nightgown. However, this has become a real you know, tale within the Magritte literature and within Magritte's biography. And so a lot of images like this, where the faces are covered, there's aspects of hiding and layering, um, that there's a sense of claustrophobia, a lot of people will point to this episode in his life and um, read, read that into the images. So this is one of the canvases that, that Edward James commissioned from Magritte, and it is called the Red Model, and it's the third version of this particular composition where you have these feet morphing into shoes or shoes morphing into feet in the center. If you look very, very closely at the painting, you notice how incredibly detailed it is. And as I was saying earlier, how you can see how technically skilled Magritte was by the end of this time period. You not only have the sense of this really like coarse dirt, but you also see the coins, you see a cigarette, you see matchsticks, and then there's this crumpled bit of paper, which, interestingly, shows a painting from earlier in this time period that we have in the exhibition. And so it's this glance back at some of his previous work. And then this figure in the middle is just so incredibly painted. You have on his foot the vein, and it's almost as if you can feel the blood pounding in that vein, and how smoothly the shoe becomes the foot, or the, or the foot becomes the shoe. And you can see how incredibly um, old these shoes are, how used up those, um, those laces are. And so he's paying attention to every single detail in this. What do you expect from the audience of these shows to take, out, sure, yes. to take back home? I hope that they experience Magritte's work in the way that he intended, that they come away thinking about objects differently and thinking about art differently. A big part of his project was not only making you look at ordinary, everyday things and making them in a mysterious way, he also wanted you to think about art making and think about how artists represent things or represent the world. Llegamos al final de nuestra cita de hoy, espero que lo hayas disfrutado y te vuelvo a ver la próxima semana. Chau chau.